Kamito was an ugly frog-eyed loser who was the only male who could control spirits. Since he was powerful, he was invited to an all-girls magical school. However, his life was ruined when a snotty brat made him her slave, forcing him to be his maid at home. When Kamito came across a red-haired girl bathing in a river, he tried to assure her that he meant no harm by saying he wasn't EDP. The embarrassed girl told him she was 16 years old, but the idiot Kemito argued that no 16-year-old would be as flat as an ironing board. Emotional damage! Which made her mad, so she summoned her fire elemental Wafi. Realizing she was a spirit elementalist, he tried to reason with her, but she used her flaming whip against him. She cut through the tree he was hiding behind, and Kamito reminded her that she was still flashing him her knickknack racks, causing her to drop the whip in an attempt to cover up her body. But it cut through the tree behind her. He had noticed this and managed to save her before the tree fell, but he accidentally grabbed her exposed chest. So she whipped him again. When he woke up, her whip was tied around his neck, and she was fully dressed as she told him to be glad she spared his miserable life. Kamito reminded her that he had been the one to save her, but the girl, whose name was Claire, said he had only pretended to save her so he could cop a feel of her plots. He smiled and pointed out that she was one of the Orisha Spirit Academy's shrine princesses, which made her ask why that mattered. He explained that only chaste maidens were able to interact with spirits from Astral Zero, so it was obvious she had no experience with men, but said she was quite bold for wearing red underwear. She immediately argued saying it was white, and that was when she realized he had been teasing her. Seeing that she was embarrassed, he stood up and apologized. When she asked why he was in the forest, he showed her a letter, saying he'd been invited by Greyworth, the headmaster of the academy. As they walked through the forest, Kamito asked Claire why she was in the forest, so she told him she was purifying herself in preparation for a spirit contract. She took him to an old building with a barrier and explained that inside was the legendary Holy Sword, Demon Slayer, which had defeated the demon Lord Solomon. Claire said no shrine princess had been able to form a contract with it since the school's founding, so they weren't sure if it was real. But since it had a powerful spirit, she was willing to try. Kamito pointed out that she was already contracted to a fire spirit, and she admitted she needed more power, but he reminded her that sealed spirits were hard to tame and could even kill their elementalist. Claire argued that she needed more power and took the barrier down before walking inside. Kamito followed her, but she told him if anything were to happen, she wouldn't be responsible for him. So he asked if she was sure she could tame the spirit, and when she said yes, he said there would be no problem if he came along. They soon got to the room that held the sword on an altar in the middle of the room, and as Claire approached it, Kamito warned her to be careful, which made Claire call him a scared <laughs> When she got to the altar, she held on to the hilt of the sword and said the magic words to form a contract and pulled it from the stone, but it turned to ashes, after which the altar exploded. Kamito quickly saved her before she could get hurt and showed her the real sword hovering above their heads, which attacked them. He pulled them out of the way, but Claire got up and summoned her elemental, which took on its spirit form and attacked the sword. However, it was stabbed and as a sad Claire was nearly attacked by the sword, Kamito stepped in front of her and held up his hand. As the sword stabbed him, he spoke the contract words and managed to form a contract with the sword. The contract formation knocked him out cold, and when he woke up later, Claire asked how a man could form a contract with a spirit, since only females had been able to do so. While she complained, Kamito wondered if she knew there was only one man in history who had ever done that, and he later became known as the Demon Lord Solomon. When he didn't give her an answer, Claire demanded he become her contracted spirit, since he basically stole the Demon Slayer's spirit from her. What? Later on, Claire led Kamito to the academy with her whip wrapped around his neck like a leech. He thanked her for showing him the way but asked why she had led him there like a stubborn donkey. Claire told him it was because he couldn't agree to form a contract with her, as well as the fact that she couldn't trust a degenerate peeping Tom. He told her to stop calling him that and introduced himself as Keisai of Kamito, but she said it sounded weird, so she'll call him Captain Fugly. Kamito told her that her name Claire Rouge wasn't common either, and she admitted that it sounded weird, but he said it sounded nice to him. Claire got embarrassed and tried to play it off, but when she turned around, she realized he'd gotten loose and went in search of him. However, Kamito, who was in the nearby tree, jumped down and headed to the headmaster's office. As he walked through the school hall, the students wondered what a guy was doing in their school and whispered amongst themselves. When Kamito got to the headmaster's door, 
he heard her arguing with someone, who disagreed with her decision to invite him to the school. Suddenly the door was kicked open, and a blue-haired girl kicked him to the floor, before straddling him and holding her sword to his neck. When she realized he was a guy, she stood up and threatened to cut him up. She tried to attack him, but he moved out of the way, and before she could strike again, the headmaster told her to stand down. The girl, whom the headmaster referred to as Ellis Farengard, tried to argue, but the headmaster didn't give her the chance to speak and asked her to leave before inviting Kami To into her office. Inside her office, Greyworth told him that Ellis was the head of the Sylphid Knights, who kept the order in school and told him she wasn't pleased with the idea of him being around. While speaking, she noticed the spirit seal on his right hand and asked how he had gotten it. Kami To told her it was a long story and asked if what she had written in the letter was true. She confirmed it and said his contracted spirit was still alive, so he asked where Restia, the spirit, was, but Greyworth told him there was no way she'd share that information with him. Kami To then asked what she hoped to achieve by withholding the information, and she told him that she was having him transferred to the school. Sometime later, while Ellis was giving him a tour of the school, Kami To wondered what the crazy old witch Greyworth was planning. His thoughts were disturbed by Ellis, who accused him of checking out her backside, but he explained that he'd been lost in thought and told her not to get her panties in a twist. Ellis reminded him that she was only tolerating his presence in the school because of the headmaster and said she would never accept a male elementalist. She then took him to the stables and pointed to a poorly built shack and told him it was to be his lodgings since he smelled like a donkey with a chronic case of body odor. Next, she took him to his classroom and left him in front of the door only for Claire to use her whip to pull him towards her. She asked why he was being all chummy with Ellis after running away from her and he explained that she was showing him around the school, since he was now a student there. Claire didn't believe him and said there were no male elementalists. The slow-witted girl then reminded him that he stole the sword from her, so he had to form a contract with her, and since he was tired of her insistent yapping, he agreed. However, the smug smile on her face disappeared when he backed her into a corner and said that to form a contract with a high-level humanoid spirit, they had to seal it with a kiss. Claire became flushed and tried to argue, that it wasn't necessary to do that, so he asked if she was scared and tilted her chin up like a sigma male, but before he could go further, they were interrupted by Freya, their teacher. Later inside the classroom, Kamito introduced himself to the class and was received with mixed emotions, making him realize starting a harem was impossible. When he noticed Claire fuming in her chair, he wondered if she forgave him for teasing her earlier. One of the students asked if he had tamed the sword spirit, and he asked how she had heard of that. But Claire butted in and announced that she had tamed him after he tamed the spirit, which made another student ask what their relationship was. Claire wasted no time in saying it was one of a master and slave, which made Kamito ask when he had agreed to be her slave. Freya had to hit the table with her book to restore order and asked Kamito to find a seat, but on his way to find an available seat, Claire wrapped her whip around his neck, stopping him in his tracks. She demanded he sit beside her but Kamito said he didn't want to be stuck seeing her stupid face every time he sat down, and while he struggled to get loose, someone shot an ice arrow at the whip to free him. When he looked up, he saw a blonde-haired girl with green eyes, whom Claire referred to as Rinslet Lauren Frost, as she asked why she was butting into their affair. Rinslet said it was obvious Kamito wanted to sit with her, which made him wonder if there was also ice in her brains, however he thanked her for saving him. Instead of acknowledging what he said, she asked him to become her servant, which made Claire tell her to f and find someone else. The two girls started arguing and kept pulling poor Kamito between them like a rag doll, and just after Freya asked them to knock it off, a maid came running towards them, asking her mistress to stop. While she was running, she accidentally tripped on the steps and almost fell, so Kamito ran to help her, but he got a face full of her plots, and the two went tumbling down together. The maid whose name was Carol apologized, but made no move to get up as the class erupted in screams while Claire brought out her whip to discipline him. That night while laying in his shed, Kamito recalled his conversation with Greyworth, where she had told him that the blade dance competition would begin in two months and he had to participate. He told her he wasn't going to do it, but she said he was the only one who stood a chance against the strongest blade dancer Rin Ashbell, who had returned and would bring the spirit of darkness with her. Kamito recalled his conversation with Freya, where she told him that their class was filled with problem children and his presence would make things worse. She said she understood Greyworth's reasons for admitting him into the academy, 
but asked what his reason was for accepting her crazy idea to participate in the blade dance. Kami To then told her he had only done what he was ordered to do, but when she left him alone, he said the winner of the blade dance got any wish granted, and he wanted Ronaldo to win the World Cup. Back in the present, just when he complained that he was hungry, he heard a knock, and when the door opened, he saw Rinslet standing outside with a tray of food. Happily, he got up and praised her, saying she was a good person, which made her say she would gladly share with him if he accepted to be her servant. But Kamito said he wasn't interested and shut the door in her face. She knocked again and said she'd overlook his rudeness if he licked her feet, which had him slamming the door again, but she stuck her foot in, which caused her to scream in pain when he pushed the door. Finally, he opened the door and asked why she behaved like a rabid bloodhound, but she ignored his insult and walked in. As she walked into the room, she said it was no different from a poultry and invited him to come to live with her, but Kamito declined her offer, claiming he'd rather make out with a frog than stay with her. She put the food down and turned to leave, but he stopped her and offered to be friends with her if she wanted. Rinslet was surprised and became flustered, which made him ask if everything was all right, but she brushed his question aside and tried to act cool and unbothered. Just then, they heard Claire call Rinslet's name as she dropped all the canned food in her hands. She called Rinslet a cannabing for trying to steal her slave, and Rinslet wasted no time in throwing the insult back at her flat Claire clapped back, saying she was the only one who could be compared to a dog since her family crest literally had a dog in it. Rinslet argued that the Lauren Frost crest had a proud dire wolf, but Claire laughed and said it was a chihuahua at best, Emotional damage, which made Rinslet pissed, so she summoned her elemental, a demon ice spirit named Fenrir. Claire wasn't phased by this and mocked the ugly demon spirit too, <laughs> but Rinslet said she wouldn't let a flat-chested low lead insult her family name and get away with it. At the mention of her lack of plot, Claire got angry, summoned Scarlet her elemental and challenged Rinslet, who said she would take Kamito if Claire lost. Hearing this Kamito protested and asked Carol if it was a good idea to allow the duel. Carol told him it was fine and explained that the two were always at each other, though even if they were friends. The elementals attacked each other and the girls got into a heated argument, but as they fought, Fenrir hit Scarlet and she landed on Kamito's shack, setting it ablaze. When Claire noticed this, she told Rinslet, who didn't believe it until she turned around. But she claimed it was something she could handle and shot a freezing arrow at it. The arrow put out the fire but destroyed the shack in the process. And when she said she might have used too much power, Claire told her to admit that she had no control over it. As the two started arguing, Ellis arrived with two other knights and scolded them for dueling on school grounds. When she saw the destroyed shack, she thought Kamito was the one that destroyed it and tried to scold him. But Claire told her the pea-brained Rinslet was the one to do it. When Rinslet pointed at Claire, saying she had started the fire, Ellis said she was tired of the students from the Raven class always causing trouble. The other knights mocked them saying they couldn't expect anything less from a backwater noble and the sister of a traitor. Claire told them to shut up and when they tried to respond, Ellis stopped them, saying she would report the incident to the command center and turn to leave. However, before they could leave, Claire called them spineless cowards, which made Ellis threaten her. But she refused to shut up, saying she wouldn't let anyone get away with insulting her sisters, so she challenged the three of them to a duel. Rinslet volunteered to fight with her, so Ellis agreed and instructed Kamito to join them so it would be a fair fight. Claire then took Kamito to her room only to be surprised she was living in a messy room. When he complained about it, she summoned Scarlet and asked her to clean up. Kamito asked if it was okay for him to be in the girls' dorms, and she said since he was her spirit elemental there was no problem. She also admitted that she didn't want to leave him alone because she didn't want Rinslet to sink her fangs into him. When she turned around, she saw that he was looking through her book collection, and when he started reading the names, which all had some kinky names, she threw a pillow at his face and ran to pick up the books. While she was picking up the books, he noticed something crumpled on the floor and put it in his pocket. He then asked Claire why she had no roommates, and she said no one wanted to be around her, so he asked if she had a partner for the blade dance because she needed a team of five to be able to participate. Claire told him she could handle it, and said that all she needed was a powerful spirit and all would be well, saying since he was her slave, he would have to show her what he was capable of. He then told her that she kept dragging him into trouble and mentioned that he hadn't eaten all day. So Claire took him to the kitchen and showed him all the canned food she had and asked him to pick one. 
Kamito asked why she was leaving like a domesticated dog, but she gave some silly excuses, so he told her to just admit that she was useless in the kitchen. She told him to shut up and revealed she was going to bathe, but told him not to look in on her, as if he'd risk his life to get a glimpse of her exoskeleton. While she was in the shower, Kamito used Scarlet as a stove, and while he was apologizing for misusing her ability, he heard Claire screaming soon. She ran into the kitchen with a water spirit wrapped around her body asking for help. Kamito told her not to panic and said a chant before he pulled her toward him, and the spirit released her. He placed his jacket around her and handed her a handkerchief to clean her face, but when she took it, she realized it was her underwear, which he had picked up earlier and accused him of being a disgusting pant-sniffing thief before trying to barbecue him. When they sat down to eat, Kamito asked why she was after a strong spirit, so she decided to tell him the truth. She explained that there was someone she wished to see again and took off her necklace and showed it to him. And when he looked at it, he noticed it had the crest of the Dukery of Elstein. Later that night, as they walked through the forest, Kamito thought back to what Claire had revealed to him. She had told him that the Elstein Dukem had fallen four years ago after her sister Rubia caused a great disaster to befall the Ordesia Empire which had earned her the name Calamity Queen. This made him feel that both he and Claire were alike, because they both wanted to find someone important to them. They finally got to the Astral Gate, which would take them to the Astral Zero for the duel and Claire assured Kamito it was safe and only connected to low-level spirits, which was why the school left it alone. When they stepped into the center, they were transported to Astral Zero, where Claire told him that any injuries sustained would be mild, but Kamito said it could be dangerous for the mind. As they walked to find Rinslet, Claire told him that she heard Ren Ashbell would participate in the upcoming blade dance and said she looked up to her and aspired to be like her. She also said Ren's blade dance had helped clean up her sister's mess so she owed her. Just then, they reached the arena, and Rinslet asked why they were late. So Claire explained that she had been attacked by a water spirit, which surprised Rinslet, making Cambita wonder if the spirit devices were malfunctioning or if someone was behind the attack. Ellis and her team soon arrived, and after talking for a while, they began the duel when Ellis summoned her elemental, a demon wind spirit. It attacked Kamito, but he jumped out of the way while Claire told him to use his elemental wafi. He summoned it, but instead of a sword, it came out as a dagger, which was a surprise to Claire who had seen it before. Kamito explained that it had been a long time since he used a contracted spirit, which was why he wasn't able to draw out its full power. Ellis's elemental tried to attack him again, so he jumped out of the way and Claire used her wit to pull it back, but one of Ellis's teammates used her ice sword to attack her. When Kamito turned to look at her, the second girl attacked him with a double-sided hammer, but he jumped out of the way in time. The girl tried to attack again but was shot by Rinslet, whom Kamito scolded for drawing attention to herself since she was supposed to be their support. However, Rinslet ignored him and was doing a pose when Ellis sent her elemental after her. She shot at it, but it managed to push her down with the force of its wind, which caused Carol and Claire to scream her name. The distracted Claire was then attacked by one of Ellis's teammates, but she used her flaming whip to hold her and surrounded her in a ball of fire. She then told Kamito to go after Ellis, which he did, but when he threw his dagger at her, she hit it with hers and it disappeared. Ellis then called her elemental spirit and it transformed into a lance, but the idiot Kamito was entranced by how she looked and called her beautiful. Ilias thought he was referring to her lance, and he admitted he was referring to her, but she misunderstood him and tried to attack him. However, she stopped when Claire's fireball and Rinslet's freezing arrow collided and exploded in their faces, causing the two girls to start bickering, arguing about who deserved the stupidity award. Kamito was focused on the two when Ellis tried to attack again, so he stopped her when he noticed purple clouds appear and a demon spirit descended from it. Ellis told them to leave, but Kamito said he would stay behind and help her. But she reminded him that he wasn't able to control his elemental wafi. Claire in her desire to get more power decided to fight the demon spirit to form a contract with it even though Kamito told her to stay back. She moved around well with the help of Ellis but still ended up proving she was no match for the spirit that beat the living shit out of her and slander on a pillar. Claire was in a dangerous spot, so her elemental tried to protect her but ended up getting eaten. Kamito then jumped in while trying his best to summon the sword in his right hand, and when he managed to summon the sword, he cut the demon in half with a single strike and defeated it. With the danger now gone, the group tended to Claire who was depressed because she had lost Scarlet. 
Kami To then tried to cheer her up, but he ended up collapsing as a result of using all his juice to summon his sword. Later on, Kami To woke up and found a naked girl under the sheets, who introduced herself as established while he was trying to figure out how the whole got in the room. He heard Rinslet's voice and asked her to hide, but she hid under the sheets again. When Rinslet came in, she said since he was feeling better he should get up. But when he hesitated, she noticed the bulge in the sheets and asked what he was hiding. Carol told her it was a normal thing for guys to be that way once they woke up. But the stubborn girl said she wanted to see and pull the sheet off to reveal established. This made Rinslet call him a disgusting pedo for having a plotless little girl in his bed. But when he tried to explain, she summoned Fenrir and ordered him to tear Kamito to pieces. However, before he could attack, Est commanded him to stop which he did, shocking them, so Est revealed she was the spirit of the sword he summoned. Later that day, Kamito and Est were walking around the school grounds when Est told him the reason he wasn't able to use her full power was because he was still attached to his former contracted spirit. While they were discussing, they were interrupted by Ellis, who always got the wrong idea whenever she saw Kamito with a girl. She accused Kamito of being a shameless pedo, for going after an innocent young girl and pointed her sword at him. But before he could explain that Est was his sword spirit, Est reshaped Ellis's sword, which convinced her that she wasn't as bright as she assumes. They sat to chat, and she apologized for harboring hatred towards him solely because he was a man. But Kamito told her it was fine and accepted her apology. He then asked about Claire because he had checked her room earlier and she wasn't there. So Ellis told him that Claire seemed to have been upset about losing her contracted spirit and was probably entering the contracting ceremony for military spirits in the Academy City, which was decided through blade dance. After hearing that Claire was trying to fight in a blade dance without a contracted spirit, Kamito decided to go look for her to stop her. Meanwhile, Claire, who was on her way to the arena, ran into someone in a hood who offered her a mysterious dark power. And as expected, the clueless girl accepted it without thinking of the consequences. Kemito ran to the arena with S to stop Claire from getting a one-way ticket to hell. But Claire, with her arrogance and foolishness, had already entered the blade dance without a spirit. However, her efforts were useless and wasted as she was getting a record-breaking ass-whooping from her competitors putting her at a real disadvantage. They made fun of her for battling without a contracted spirit and mocked her for being weak and useless compared to her sister, who was known as the Calamity Queen. This hit a nerve, and Claire got in her feelings which caused the mysterious power she was given on her left hand to activate. It summoned a frenzied Hellcat spirit, which was a possessed version of Claire's Scarlet, and the dark aura rising from the Hellcat made all the other spirits in the arena go wild. Just then, Kamito arrived as the audience was evacuated, and he recognized the black Hellcat as Claire's fire spirit, Scarlet, so S told him it was being possessed by a frenzied spirit. Kamito entered the arena with S as a sword and approached Claire who appeared to be in a daze, so he tried to remind her that she wasn't alone, saying that he was with her. He told her that even if she wanted power, this wasn't the way, and that if it was powered, she saw he'd be her contracted spirit. The Hellcat then attacked Kamito, who had analyzed its attack patterns with ease because of its frenzied mode, allowing him to strike it with a single slash and freed Scarlet from the frenzy spirit's possession. After the frenzy spirit's aura disappeared, the other spirits in the arena were set free, and Kamito then asked Claire where she got such power from. Before she was able to explain, the hooded guy appeared and revealed herself as Restia. Kamito recognized her and tried to talk to her, but she released another frenzy spirit before disappearing. Claire and Kamito ran, but since he was still in shock, Claire asked him who the mysterious girl was, and he told her that Restia was his contracted spirit and blamed himself for how she had turned out. Claire tried to make him snap out of blaming and faulting himself by kissing him, but she let him know that it was a one-time thing. No! God, please, no! No! Kamito eventually came back to his senses, and they both rushed to defeat the frenzied spirit before it reached the town. But while battling the spirit, Claire realized Kamito's fighting style was quite similar to that of Ren. Kamito managed to defeat the frenzied spirit, but collapsed because he had used too much of his power. When he woke up, he found Est naked under his sheets again, which caused a problem with the girls when they came to check up on his condition and saw the two in a compromising situation. Meanwhile, inside a carriage heading to the academy, a purple-haired girl spoke to herself, saying she had finally found Ren. Sometime in the past, the purple-haired girl fought against the spirit, 
and when she tried to summon her elemental, she couldn't, so she resigned herself to her death. Just before the spirit could attack her, a young Kamito jumped in front of her and killed it to save her. With the spirit defeated, Kamito asked if she was okay, so she thanked him for saving her. But she noticed the elemental Wafi in his hand and remembered it belonged to Ren. When she asked why he had it, he quickly hid it behind him, and that was when she realized it was Ren. So she demanded he tell her why he was pretending to be a girl. Kamito told her he had a good reason and begged her to keep his secret, which she agreed to do because he had saved her life. He then offered to take her out of the forest, but when he noticed she had no shoes on he offered to carry her on his back. As he carried her to the edge of the forest, she asked why he dressed as a girl to participate in the blade dance, and Kamito told her it was because he had a wish he wanted to come true. When he got to the edge of the forest, he put her down and said he had another match to get to. But before he left she asked him to tell her his real name, which he did, so she asked if she would see him again, and he said yes. Back in the present, the purple-haired girl was still in the carriage when she said she was glad to have finally found him. Meanwhile, Kamito had just woken up and decided he was healed enough from the effects of the battle a week ago so he could go all out during the team battle later in the day. When he sat up, he grabbed two handfuls of spare plots and immediately removed his hands when he realized what was happening. The bird-brained est asked if he didn't want to play with her plots anymore, and instead of answering her, he asked why she was naked in his bed, but the clueless half-wit spirit told him she was wearing thigh highs. Kamito told her that wearing them didn't count as being dressed, so Est called him a scoundrel for trying to get her naked. What? Like she wasn't already that way. Kamito told her to get off the bed, and instead of doing as she was told, she kissed him, which made him ask why she did that, but she said it was his wake-up kiss. She told him she knew kissing was the way to form a contract, and he tried to explain that it wasn't necessary, but she stopped him saying she was his contracted spirit and tried to kiss him. However, they stopped when Claire came into the room and Kamito tried to explain, but she called him all sorts of names and the two fell out of bed. Claire stood above them and demanded he explain himself, but Kamito told her that her underwear was visible from his position, which made her close her legs quickly before calling Scarlet to burn him up. Later in the day, they went for their team battle, and Freya explained that their performance during the battles would affect their school rankings. She also told them that only the top three teams would be allowed to participate in the blade dance, and when Kamito pointed out that it was unfair to put just him and Claire against a team of five. Freya told them she wasn't to blame for them having only two members on their team, adding that if by the time of the blade dance they didn't have five people on their team, they wouldn't be allowed to participate. Claire assured her that they would have a complete team by then, and even bragged that she and Kamito were enough to handle the team in front of them before Freya blew the whistle. Later on, while they were eating with Est, Claire complained about how easy it was for them to get their asses handed to them, but Kamito explained that it was because the other team was stalling. He then remembered that one of them had done a summoning dance and used her stampede spirit to possess the beasts around resulting in a stampede. After that, Freya told them to gather more members if they wanted a chance to participate in the blade dance, but before leaving them, she pointed out that Kamito fought like he was alone and that wasn't good for teamwork. Kamito was lost in thought, so Est and Claire asked if it was because he was thinking about Restia, but he didn't respond, so she told him that if he wanted to talk about it, he could talk to her. Just then, Rinslet and Carol approached them and claimed she was just passing by. However, Carol said she wanted to join them for lunch, so Kamito invited her. When they were seated, Carol told them about the new transfer student, who used a spirit of the holy attribute during her entrance exams. When Carol mentioned she had an impressive rack, Kamito asked why she had such information, but she just asked if he wanted her to set him up. A shy Claire asked if he was a milkshake lover, and Est asked if he was the type of guy who was interested in a dreamboat body and didn't care if she had a shipwrecked face. Later on, Rinslet asked if they had gotten new members for their team, but Claire told her they hadn't found anyone yet. When she asked Rinslet if she'd found teammates, she claimed she hasn't seen anyone who was as good as she was, but Carol told them everyone on her team had quit because of the unrealistic expectations she had and because of her undeniably large ego. Claire agreed that she was too prideful to work with others and wondered if they would find anyone to join their team. When she mentioned asking the new student, Rinslet tried to hint that Claire should ask her but the dumb airhead didn't catch on, so Carol whispered in Kamito's ear that she was waiting for them to ask her. Kamito then told Claire to ask her, but she refused saying Rinslet was a loose cannon 
and would cause him a lot of problems because she was too full of herself. He managed to convince her, and Claire asked Rinslet to join their team, but the self-absorbed girl said they should join her team instead. While they argued, Ellis approached them and asked Kamito to join her team, but before he could give her an answer, Claire hugged him and said there was no way he'd leave her to join Ellis's team. Her behavior made him realize that because of her past, she was scared of being abandoned, so he declined Ellis' an offer. Ellis then turned to leave but told him the headmaster had requested for him. When he got to Greyworth's office, she said she had someone she wanted him to meet and called the new girl in. When she approached him, she wondered if he knew who she was, but when Kamito asked who she was she realized he had no idea who she was, so Greyworth introduced her as the second princess of the empire, Vienna Ordesia. She then told him she had a job for her and wanted him and his team to be her bodyguards. Kamito wondered why a person of such high ranking would transfer to their school and down on his knees to show respect, but Fianna told him it wasn't necessary since she was the lost queen. Greyworth then explained that after Rubia disappeared four years ago, the Divine Ritual Institute had tried to put a second spirit princess to replace her and calm the fire spirit king's rage, so they chose Fianna, but she refused. This led to her stepping down from her position and getting disowned by the royal family. Kamito knew she had been disowned, but the reason was never made known to the public. After they got that out of the way, Kamito asked what mission Greyworth had for him, so she told him it was an S-rank mission, which would raise his team's ranking if he succeeded. This got his attention, so he asked for more details, and she explained that the Gad, the old mining town where Spirit Ore was once mined, had been having unusual earthquakes recently. She said she needed him to investigate the cause, but Kamito asked how it wasn't S-rank mission if all they had to do was investigate earthquakes. Greyworth told him there was something in the town that could potentially cause trouble, but before she could say more, Freya came in. She explained that the potential threat was a strategic military spirit that could easily destroy a city. She added that they were considered inhumane, so they had been sealed off and disposed of after the last Great War. Kamito then asked if they were the cause of the earthquakes, so Greyworth revealed that he needed to investigate to find out. Fian also added that if the seals were weakened, she would use a spirit dance ritual to calm the spirits. Kamito informs them he'd have to speak with Claire to find out if she'd want to go on the mission before he could give them an answer. When they left the office, Freya asked Greyworth if she was aware that Fianna had cheated during the transfer exams, and Greyworth said she knew. Freya asked if she was going to turn a blind eye, and she told her that it would be fortunate for them if Fianna reawakened as an elementalist. But before she could continue what she was saying, a one-eyed creature appeared in the office and flew to her. Greyworth held it in her hand and told Freya there was an uninvited guest in the Academy City. Meanwhile, as Kamito and Fiano walked through the corridor, he asked if she was okay with him being her bodyguard, and she admitted that she requested for him specifically. While they were speaking, they heard the student nearby gossip about them, and Fianna pushed her chest against his body and asked if he'd believe her that she told him she had transferred schools because of him. Kamito was confused and asked what she meant, so she smiled and called him Ren, which made him ask how she knew his identity. Vienna stepped back and before she could say anything else, Claire, who was complaining about Kamito taking his time in the headmaster's office, turned the corner and saw them. She called Kamito a shameless rake, so he tried to explain himself, but she wasn't interested in listening and was just threatening to deal with him when Fiona asked if she was Claire Rouge. Claire turned to her and asked why she had asked that, but Fianna said nothing, and the two ended up staring at each other. Later that evening in their room, Claire complained about having to share a room with Fianna, saying it was already cramped with Est staying there, so Kamito offered to leave. Claire didn't like the idea and told him if he left, there would be no one to cook or clean. She even admitted that if he left, Ellis and Rinslet would have the chance to make their move on him, and she wasn't willing to share him. This made Fianna ask what the nature of their relationship was, so Claire told her that Kamito was her slave spirit and that they already completed the contract ritual. After hearing this, Fianna looked mad and Kamito wondered why she would be mad over him and Claire kissing. Fianna then pointed at Claire and challenged her to a duel, saying that if she lost she'd leave the room and allow the two lovebirds to enjoy themselves. Claire tried to refuse, so Fianna asked if she was refusing because she was scared of losing Kamito to her. After hearing this, she immediately agreed and summoned Scarlet. However, Fianna said she wasn't challenging her to a blade dance, 
and said it was only a back alley thug that solved things with violence. Claire made a confused sound, which made Fiona ask if all her brain's energy supply went to her plots. But when she looked at her chest, she said Claire was genetically stupid since she couldn't understand simple things. This angered Claire, so she tried to attack her. But Kamito stopped her and Fiona announced they would have a cook-off. After cooking, Claire was the first to present her food, but it looked like the charred remains of whatever she had put in the pot. She confidently told them it tasted better than it looked, and when S took a bite, she said it tasted like death. But Claire argued that Scarlet had no problem eating it, so Kamito told her that Scarlet was a fire spirit and had no taste buds. Fiona placed her meal before them, and when Kamito asked what it was, she said it was the royal family's special white stew, and he wondered if she was colorblind or plain stupid, because the food before them was red. Claire claimed it didn't look safe to eat, and Fiona urged them to try it, so Claire did and immediately fell face first into the plate. Later that night, the knights had gotten their asses beaten, and only Ellis was left standing, so she fought off the intruder with all her might. However, she wasn't strong enough, and just when he tried to deliver the final blow, Claire used her flaming whip to save her. Camito rushed to her, but she told them to leave, saying the fight was none of their business, but they argued that as long as their friend was in trouble, it was their business. The intruder said Camito's name and told him he wasn't going to fight him in his weakened state. He raised the item he had stolen, claiming that he already got what he came for so he turned to leave. Claire tried to stop him, but he jumped before her whip could reach him. She went after him and called out to Kamito, who followed, but Ellis told them to be careful since he had two elemental spirits. Claire tried to hit him with her whip, but ended up cutting a tree in half, and when it fell, it created a cloud of dust which blocked her view. Kamito jumped over the tree and said he could sense the guy right before he appeared at his side, and referred to Kamito as Rand while trying to stab him. Kamito dodged all his attacks, so he summoned a third elemental, shocking Kamito, who said it was impossible. The intruder said the demon lord Solomon had controlled 72 spirits, but Kamito argued that it was all a myth, and no one could confirm it. The intruder told Kamito that he would surpass that and introduced himself as Joe Inzaji, the successor of the demon lord. Just then, Claire threw a fireball, but he dispelled it using a fourth spirit, which resulted in a smoke screen. Joe held Kamito at knife point and said that killing him wouldn't prove he was the demon lord's successor. But before he could say more, Fianna threw a crystal at him, which he cut in half, causing an explosion of light. Enraged, he turned to look at her, but she told him to leave her friends alone, even though her knees were shaking. Cho threw an elemental wafi at her, but she was frozen in place by fear. Kamito quickly jumped in front of her and deflected the weapon, but it cut his shoulder, which made Cho confirm that Kamito had fallen off, before running away while Claire ran to Kamito to see if he was all right and when the two turned around they noticed Fiona had fainted. Fiona had just woken up when Kamito walked into the room, so she asked how his shoulder was doing. He told her that it was okay, but she apologized for causing them trouble because she had been too much of a coward to do anything. Kamito ignored what she had said and thanked her for helping by throwing the open spirit oar. Kamito sat on her bed and smiled at her, but she looked away and wondered why he cared about her when she had only come to use him. He informed her that even though the knights were investigating the incident, they still had to go to the mining town. He then told her he wanted to speak to her about an important matter, but she noticed the door had opened, so she said she would speak to him where Claire wouldn't be able to hear their conversation. Immediately Claire burst in demanding to know what was so important they had to discuss in secret. Kamito told the dirty-minded girl to keep her head out of the gutter and stop imagining shit, but she pulled out her what to attack so Kamito picked Fiona up and jumped out the window. He took her to the forest and asked how she knew he was Ren, so she gave him clues until he remembered who she was. Kamito asked why she had transferred schools, and she admitted she heard about a male elementalist, so she did some investigations and found out he was the same person she had met years ago. As they moved towards the lake, she told him she decided to come to Arisha to use his secret to blackmail him to make him form a team with her, which made him ask why. So she said being on the same team as Ren would ensure that she won the blade dance, which would help her regain her title and honor and shut all her haters up. Meanwhile in the school, Rinslet tells Claire she wants to join their mission, but Claire asks why she wants to come along, to which she responds saying she doesn't want to be away from her servant. Claire argued that Kamito was her slave and not Rinslet's servant, so she had no business coming along. However, Rinslet then told her that if she agreed she'd share the secrets to growing bigger plots with her.
I don't blame you. Damn good deal. Hearing this made the miniature Barbie doll agree since she was desperate to get Kamito's attention. After agreeing, she shyly asked Rinsla to tell her what it was, and she gladly whispered it in her ear. Back in the forest, Fiona asked Kamito why he wasn't angry at her for trying to use him, and he told her that all the women in his life were already taking advantage of him. So what's one more going to do? Just then, Ellis and two other knights approached them. And since Ellis liked to jump to conclusions, she immediately thought the two were out in the forest developing plot. Since Fiona liked to tease Kamito, she hugged his arms and put her head on his shoulder before telling Ellis that they had indeed come out to develop plot. Ellis drew her sword and told them she wouldn't allow such immoral behavior on school grounds. But one of her knights pulled her to calm down and stop behaving like a jealous ex-girlfriend. When she put her sword away, Kamito asked why they were out so early, so she explained that they were on their way to Gad, because they tracked Geo to that location. Kamito asked her to join him since he was also going there, but she refused saying they had to restore their honor by catching him themselves. When it was time to leave for Gad, Kamito waited outside the gates with S for the girls to arrive. Claire and Rinslet were the first to arrive, so he asked why Rinslet was coming along. Claire told him she allowed it in exchange for some important information, which made him confused. So Rinslet tried to tell him what it was, but Claire threatened her with her whip. After Rinslet said goodbye to Carol, Vienna approached them while struggling with her horse, so Kamito helped her calm her down as they were once roomies in the stable. Claire asked why she couldn't ride a horse when she was a princess, so she told her that she could ride the things that really matter. Claire teased her saying it was her plots that were stopping her from balancing, which made Fiona say the only reason Claire could ride was because she was built like a boy. Rinslet then introduced herself to Fiona. However, Claire didn't seem to like the way the two were behaving towards each other. They soon arrived at Gad, which looked like a complete ghost town, with no one in sight. As they walked through the mines, Fiona noticed a stone altar and told the others that a ceremony had been performed there recently. She explained that it was an unbinding ceremony, but since this altar was a fake it didn't work. Just then the cave shook and they wondered if Gio had managed to unseal the spirit as they ran to investigate. When they got there, they found Ellis fighting Gio so Kamito charged ahead to attack him. Gio didn't move and released a cloud of poison gas, which affected everyone but him since he was using a wind spirit to protect himself. Ellis then created a whirlwind and sent it towards him, which stopped the gas from spreading further and pushed him back. Next, Gio summoned an elemental waffle and tried to attack her but Claire shot a fireball at him while Kamito attacked him head on. He managed to break the sword, but Gio kept summoning one after the other, making Kamito wonder how many spirits he was controlling. Claire pulled Gio's hand with her whip, but he threw an ice ball at her, which she tried to stop with a fireball, but it exploded and sent her flying. Kamito turned to look at her, but Gio used the opportunity to attack. However, he managed to block. As they struggled against each other, Rinslet shot one of her arrows at Geo, but he blocked the attack with the help of a ground spirit, which he then used to trap her. An enraged Kamito slashed at the stone surrounding Geo, but because he had used too much divine energy, his sword shrunk to a dagger. Geo mocked him, calling him weak and pathetic, but Kamito argued that he'd been out of the game for three years, so he was still learning to control his elemental. Gio told him that wasn't the reason and said he'd show him why he was weak before pulling a move by sending a beam towards the girls. Kamito jumped in the way and managed to stop the blast before it reached the girls, but the effects of the blast sent them flying in different directions. Just as Kamito stood up and told Fiona to hide, Gio called him a pathetic weakling because he kept trying to save his friends. He then decided to end things by releasing his strongest spirit, which he claimed had been given to him by Restia. However, before he could do anything, Vienna stepped beside Kamito and demanded he stop so he asked if she was crazy, but instead of answering his taunts she started chanting and revealed a stone hidden in her bosom. Joe tried to counter the blast with his own, but it was pointless as it exploded in his face. When the best cleared up, Joe was nowhere to be seen, and when Kamito asked Fianna what the stone was, she told him it was a bloodstone, which was a special spirit stone that contained the powers of a high-level spirit. However, Claire was mostly interested in knowing why Fiona had been pretending to have big jugs when she was almost as plotless as she was, so Fiona explained that she needed the extra padding to hold her stones. She also said she heard guys liked it big, which made Kamito tell her that some guys preferred tangerines to watermelons. 
Claire started feeling hopeful until Kamito said he preferred G cups. Fiona then fell to the ground, revealing that the bloodstone was supposed to be her trump card during the blade dance. Kamito asked why she was carrying it around, so she admitted that she had lost her contracted spirit four years ago, after an incident, and because of that she had lost her position as a spirit princess, and was disowned by the royal family. She also told them she used the stone during her exams, so people believed she was controlling the spirits. When Claire asked why she wanted to come to their school so badly that she cheated her way in, Vienna said it was because she wanted to win the blade dance and have her wish to regain her powers granted. Claire said she could have joined any other team, but yet she chose their own, even though she knew they were at the bottom of the table. However, Fianna explained that since Kamito was a male elementalist and Claire was the sister of the Calamity Queen, it would not be strange to have the lost queen on their team since they were all unwanted rejects. She then asked if they would still let her be on the team now that they knew she was powerless, and Kamito told her that friends didn't abandon friends. Just then, the cave shook and Kamito asked if Gio might have unsealed the spirit. But Fianna claimed he couldn't have done, so since he didn't know the location of the real altar. Claire reminded them that he still had the sealed documents he had stolen, and could use them to find the altar's location. But Alice assured her that it was written in code, so there was no way he'd be able to decipher it. Kamito asked Alice if she was fine, but she said the poison had paralyzed her legs. Even Rinslet was in no position to fight which left only Kamito, Claire, and Fianna. Kamito asked Fianna if she would be able to do a spirit dance without her contracted spirit, and she assured him that she could so as to reveal that she knew the location of the shrine and offered to lead them there. Meanwhile, Joe had gone to meet Restia, who told him that he would soon find the real shrine, but he demanded she take him there. He said he needed to make Kamito pay for insulting the demon lord, while telling him to give up because he couldn't beat Kamito since he was the real demon lord. Back in the mines, Kamito and the girls finally found the shrine, and Claire noticed the door had elemental carvings. Est explained that the one that was scratched was Renashtal, whose existence had been erased, but before Kamito could ask what she meant, the door opened. When they walked in, Kamito asked if that was where Fianna needed to dance, and she told him yes, but said she had to purify herself first. Claire also claimed she'd lost a lot of divine power and also went to take a bath in the water. When he asked what he was to do, they told Kamito to stand outside and keep watch. As the girls purified themselves, Claire asked Fianna if someone could grow big melons if they allowed their crush to touch them. Fianna laughed and told her she was a mental lightweight for believing such a bogus lie. She then explained that when she managed to reach puberty they would grow on their own, but Claire wasn't convinced and started groping Fianna to confirm it. Meanwhile, Est asked Kamito if he was getting excited by the sound of the girls bathing, but Kamito told her he was trying to figure out Joe's game. Just then he sensed Joe's presence and Est took her sword form, allowing him to immediately clash with Joe. But as they fought, Kamito realized that Joe moved in the same way he was taught at the training institute. Joe said he was the first successful experiment to bring the demon lord back, but Kamito called him a failed experiment, which confused Jio. Kamito explained that the spirits he controlled weren't contracted to him, instead, they were sealed inside his body and were all single use. Joe insisted he was the demon lord and told Kamito he would prove it by beating him. As he tried to attack him, Kamito managed to dodge, but when he noticed his sword changing colors, he got distracted so Joe used the chance to stab his side. Joe then showed him a bloodstone and admitted it was the source of his power. But just then, Claire used her whip to pull Joe's arm back, while Fianna started her spirit dance. While she danced, Joe's body began to warp, so Kamito explained that since he had spirits sealed in his body, they reacted to Fianna's dance. When she concluded the dance, he fell to the floor while Restia floated down, which made Kamito ask why she was there. So Restia told him her mission was to release the spirit sealed in the cave. Joe stood up and demanded that Restia give him more spirits, so she decided to become his blade to see if it would push Kamito to awaken. The crazed-looking Jio released a blast of black energy towards Fianna, but Kamito stood in the way and got hit. While he was struggling against the effects of the blast, Fianna also became worried. In a desperate attempt to save Kamito, she managed to summon her night spirit, and together with Claire, they took Jio down. Some time later, Kamito woke up in his bed, and as he wondered what Restu was up to, he felt someone move under his blanket, when he raised it, he found Fianna, who explained that she was trying to transfer some of her spirit power to him. 
He told her it wasn't necessary and asked if she would return to the Institute, but she said she wouldn't, revealing she had one more wish to fulfill before she kissed his cheek. Claire soon came in and tried to beat them up. Sometime in the past, a younger Ellis was watching a blade dance match between her sister and Ren, who was also the same age as her at the time. Ren defeated Ellis's sister easily, which made Ellis interested in her and so she started admiring her. Back in the present, Kamito woke up and checked to see if there was a naked person under his sheets, but was relieved it was empty for once. He then heard voices coming from the kitchen, which belonged to Claire and Fianna, who were making chocolates, because the next day was the Valencia Festival, but it looked like Fianna was making hers with aphrodisiac ingredients, so she could give Kamito to make him lose all restraints and come for her at night, in order to truly become the demon king of the bedroom. Kamito then walked in and asked who they were making the chocolate for since their school was an all-girls school, so Claire told him that it was for her friends, which confused Kamito because he was sure she hardly had any friends, but that she tried to offer him coal claiming it was cookies. Meanwhile, Freya met with Greyworth to discuss Kamito's incomplete team, asking who he truly was, but Greyworth didn't go into detail and told her that Valseria would be returning soon. She then asked Freya for her report and she told her some illegal merchants had infiltrated the school and were trying to sell spirit seals to the students seeing as the blade dance was coming up. So Greyworth told her to increase security. Meanwhile, Kamito participated in a spurring session for the sake of raising his rank. This time, Kamito, Claire, and Fianna ended up defeating their opponents and performed well. After the match, Fianna suggested they have lunch to celebrate their team's victory, when their earlier opponents came to mock them and tried to provoke them since they lost, but they were chased away by Rinslet, who tried to invite them out for lunch. They didn't accept at first, but when they found out she just wanted to share a meal with everyone, they accepted. Before they left, Kamito had to attend his extra lesson first. In the class, Ellis was seated trying to read when Kamito approached her, but she was startled and pulled out her sword and pointed it at him. Kamito explained that he was there for the extra lesson, which made her apologize for being hasty and told him she was also there for the lesson. Kamito then noticed that Ellis was trying to memorize the entire book, so he decided to give her some crucial pointers instead. Ellis saw his tutoring was easy to understand and asked if he could tutor her after the class, so Kamito agreed and told her to meet him at the garden by five as he had other plans after the lesson. During the lecture, Ellis informed Kamito that people were selling cursed illegal seals around the academy city. After the class, Kamito and the others were walking to the restaurant when they saw Claire standing in front of a jewelry store. He approached her and asked what she was looking at, but she told him it was nothing before she walked away. Rinslet approached him and told him the next day would be Claire's birthday and said she only remembered because it was the same day as the Valencia Festival. When they finally arrived at the restaurant, Est asked Kamito if she could order whatever she wanted because he promised her she could. On the other hand, the waitress who had brought S order seemed to be interested in Claire, but she tells herself to have patience. Later on, Ellis met up with Kamito, and he told her that if she wanted to study, they should go to the library, but she told him she would prefer it if they could study in her room instead. She took Kamito to her house and went to change her outfit, leaving Kamito alone in the living room. While he was looking at the pictures she had, she returned dressed as a maid and when he asked why she was dressed that way, she told him she wanted to repay him for helping the knights and that her friends told her that guys like it when girls dress as maids. However, Kamito told her he wasn't into that kind of thing, which made Ellis call him a disgusting loser because she thought he wanted her to wear something more revealing. She pulled out her sword, held it to his neck, and threatened him before asking what he wanted her to do. Trying to not get his head chopped off, Kamito asked her to do what she knew best, so she decided to cook for him. However, she made it her duty to feed him saying it was the way maids served their masters. Later that night, while they sat on a bench outside, she said she was glad she got to pay him back now because if she had invited him over when her roommate was around, it would have been a big problem. Kamito then asked if her roommate was a scary person, so Ellis told him she was her elder sister Valseria, who was once the captain of the knights. She said they weren't related by blood, and Valseria was trained to be a numbers candidate, but after she lost against Ren three years ago, she changed. She then offered Kamito a position on the Nike squad temporarily until the members were healed and he agreed, but asked if he could be paid in advance. Meanwhile, Claire was busy making chocolate when Kamito came back to the room. She demanded to know where he had been so he told her Ellis had invited him over for dinner to say thank you. 
Claire scolded him for going to Ellis' room and said she would make him work for her, which made Kamito admit that he accepted Ellis' invitation to join the Knights. He apologized for deciding without speaking to her first, but Claire burst into tears, saying he was siding with Ellis even though he knew she and the Knights weren't on good terms, and angrily kicked him out. The next morning, Ellis addressed the Knights and told them they would be patrolling the town to make sure the students behaved well during the Valencia Festival. Camito was watching from behind and noticed most of the Knights were either mocking Ellis or discussing other matters, which made him understand why she said it was hard leading them. Ellis finally informed the Knights that Camito would be joining them, but before she could say more, the door opened and Valseria walked in. She told Ellis that her weakness had caused some of the knights to get injured, and when she referred to them as pawns, Ellis argued with her. Valseria walked towards her, but Kamito got in the way, so she said she wanted to test his power and used a wind strike, which created a hole in the center of the room and sent the students flying. She then took the four students who didn't fall over and announced they would be in her team before walking out. Meanwhile, Kamito and Ellis gathered the remaining knights and together they went ahead to patrol the town and keep people out of trouble. While they were having lunch, Kamito noticed Scarlet and followed her, until she met up with Claire. When Claire saw him, she tried to pretend everything was fine and invited him to go have cake with her, but he told her he was helping Ellis out. Claire got angry and complained that he was spending time with the same people who had been mean to her, but he tried to reason with her. Claire didn't give him the chance. And when Alice approached them, she threw the bag she was holding and ran off. While she was running, two students were watching her as they discussed what to do to her. But before they went after her, they were approached by the elf with green hair, who had served Kamito and his friends at the restaurant, and she offered to give them the power to fight Claire. Meanwhile, Claire, who had run off into the forest, was busy complaining about Kamito choosing Ellis over her when she was approached by the same elf who had offered the student's power. Back in the town, Kamito wondered where Claire had run off to, while he walked around with Ellis who was acting weird, because it was like they were on a date. She tried to walk ahead of him and nearly got hit, so Kamito pulled her hand, and she became shy all of a sudden and started manifesting her innate Sundar syndrome. The clueless Kamito asked why her hands were warm, so she told him it was his fault for holding her hand. Ellis admitted it was the first time a guy had held her hand, so he continued holding her hand as they walked. When they passed by a dress shop, Ellis stopped to admire the dress in the window. Kamito told her it would look nice on her, but she said it wouldn't. As he watched her, he asked why she became a knight, so she told him it was because she wanted to become like her sister. After all, she was noble and stood for what was right, but she had changed and started becoming power-hungry. Kamito asked what changed her and Ellis explained that it was after she lost to Ren during the blade dance four years ago. She then revealed that she wanted to participate in the blade dance, so she could prove to her sister that being a knight meant doing what was right. Kamito asked why she didn't hate Ren, since she was the reason her sister turned out like that, and Ellis admitted that she hated Ren when she defeated her sister, but as she watched her fight, she became drawn to the way she moved. She told him Ren moved as if she was wielding her sword for someone else, and that made her seem noble. Back in the forest, the elf had trapped Claire in a web and tried to hypnotize her into accepting power from her. Just when Claire was about to fall for the trick, she remembered Kamito and summoned Scarlet who burned the web and freed her. Claire tried to attack her but she disappeared and the two girls who the elf had met earlier approached Claire, and from their behavior, she realized they already accepted a cursed seal from the elf. One of the girls screamed which caused her body to be engulfed in a cloud of black smoke that flew up and released a demon spirit, which jumped down and tried to attack Claire. Meanwhile in the town, Kamito and Ellis had just come out of a store where they went to buy a gift for Claire. While they discussed, they heard an explosion and saw smoke rising nearby, so they ran to investigate what the problem was. When they got there, they saw a spirit rampaging through the streets, so Kamito pulled out his sword and the two of them charged at it. Ellis attacked the spirit, but it deflected her attack and hit Kamito, sending him flying. When Kamitio raised his head, he noticed a child crying behind the spirit and ran toward her, but the spirit tried to attack her when it noticed her. Luckily, he got to the child before it hit her, but he got stabbed in the process. Ellis ran to him and took the child so he asked her to back him up while he attacked the spirit, but Ellis pointed out that he was injured. Kamito told her that there was no other way because her elemental wafi was useless against the spirit. He charged at the spirit while Ellis used her wind spirit to give him a boost, 
which allowed him to crack the spirit's mirror, but he was pushed back by the force. The spirit tried to attack him, but he was saved by Claire, who used her flaming whip to push it back. Kamito asked why she was there, but Claire said they would talk after they take care of the spirits, and that was when he noticed the one that had been chasing her. Claire quickly explained that the masters of the spirits had fallen for the temptation of a cursed seal, so they had lost control of the spirits. Ella stood up and asked Claire to help take the spirits down, but as they charged at it, there was an explosion which took out half the spirits and destroyed the area. As Kamito wondered what had happened, they noticed Valsiria's silent fortress floating in the air, so when she came down, Kamito scolded her for being reckless and firing her elemental wafi at innocent civilians. Valsiria told him she had only done what was right, and it wasn't her fault if anyone had gotten caught in the crossfire, which surprised them, causing Ellis to ask if she didn't care about the innocent people. This only made Valsiria accuse her of being too weak to be a knight, because she couldn't take the necessary actions needed to do her duty. When she tried to walk away, Kamito called her back and demanded she apologize to Ellis, but she refused, so Kamito then tried to attack her, but she knocked him out. Kamito woke up bandaged as Claire walked into the room, so he tried to move but felt pain. Claire rushed to him to check he was okay and told him to stop moving about. He then asked how long he had been asleep for, and she told him he'd been asleep for an entire day. Kamito quickly reached into his blazer pocket and pulled out the gift he'd bought for her and explained that he had gotten it from the money Ellis paid him for helping with the knights. Claire opened it and saw it was the necklace she wanted and apologized for being an unbearable b because she was jealous of Ellis. While she was trying to kiss him, Fiona knocked on the door and teased Kamito saying he was barely out of his sick bed, but he was already trying to ravish an innocent maiden. She then informs them that the first match for the Blade Dance Trouts had been announced and that their team was up against Felseria's team. Kamito said he was going to make sure she paid for what she had said to Ellis the day before, but Fianna pushed her plots in his face, making Claire jealous, and said he was in no condition to fight. Tired of watching the two, Claire pulled her back and told Kamito she agreed with Fianna. But when he tried to argue, Rinslet walked in. She revealed she heard their predicament and claimed she would be the perfect person to take Valsiria's fortress down. Carol told them that what she wanted to ask was if she could join their team, but the proud girl tried to deny it. So Kamito asked if she would join them and she said yes. He then asked Claire if she was okay with it, and she said as long as they could take Valsiria down it was fine. Meanwhile, Ellis was sitting in her room berating herself when Claire walked in and told her that the only way to prove herself to her sister was to beat her in the blade dance. She told her their team was going up against Valsiria, which Ellis described as suicide. But Claire told her that she didn't care who she had to go up against as long as she won and had her wish granted. She then asked Ellis to join their team since Kamito was still injured, but Ellis refused saying she couldn't leave her team alone. Just then, her teammates came in, and they told her that she had a better chance of winning if she worked with Claire. Ellis tried to argue, but they said their injuries wouldn't be healed by the time of the blade dances and asked her to go on for their sake, so she agreed and told Claire she'd join her team. Later that night, as Valseria stood outside, she was approached by the green-haired elf. She told the elf to stay away from her, but she said she had come to see how the seal in her heart was doing. Valseria told her she didn't mind the seal and said as long as she was still alive by the time the blade dance would take place, she didn't care. Somewhere else on the school grounds, Ellis met up with Kamito and asked how he was doing before handing him a gift. He asked what it was for, and she said it was to show appreciation for helping the knights. She then turned to leave saying she had to wake up early for the tryouts but Kamito stopped her and told her not to worry because their team would win. Ellis told him if they won, she'd be able to prove to her sister that she had been wrong, but as the two talked, they didn't notice Restio watching them from a tree. The next day, the students gathered at the Astral Gate to watch the match between Valseria's team and Claire's team. Valseria told Ellis she was foolish to team up with Claire but Ellis told her she would defeat her and prove her wrong. Soon the bells rang and they were transported to Astral Zero to begin the match. When they got there, the girls quickly came up with a plan to take Valseria's team down. But Valseria called out to them and told them they would be facing her alone. She was carried up in her silent fortress and immediately started shooting at them. However, Rinslet managed to shoot down all her blasts, leaving them unharmed. She then shot more arrows which covered Valseria in ice who thought it was pointless until she realized that she was unable to move. Claire used the chance to counterattack using a fireball, and Ellis backed her up with a wind strike. 
Just when they thought it was over, they noticed the fortress was unharmed, and Valsiria charged at them. Before she could get to them, Vienna summoned her night spirit who stopped her in her tracks. Valsiria tried to shoot at her, but Claire used her whip to break the cannon and shot another fireball. Ellis used her wind strike to lift the fortress in a whirlwind, but the fortress was still unharmed, allowing Valsiria to resume her rapid shots. Although the girls started fighting back, their attacks were useless against the fortress. Kamito, who was watching from the astral gate, pointed out that Valsiria had reached her limit even though her elemental waff used up a lot of divine energy. Back in the astral zero Fianna was reaching her limit, and Ellis was starting to lose hope, but Claire reminded her of the promise she made to her friends. When Valsiria started shooting again, Claire summoned Scarlet, who drew the missiles to herself, allowing Claire to attack the fortress. She used her spirit magic to heat the fortress's leg before Rinslet shot at it with her freezing arrow. Claire jumped back and released a fire blaze which finally broke the fortress because of the thermal stress. Valsiria fell but managed to stand up before she was enveloped by a dark spirit and lost control. Turns out she had fallen under the control of the cursed seal that had been placed on her heart. Meanwhile, in Grey Ruth's office, Freya tried to convince her to stop the match since things were getting out of hand, but she refused, saying she wanted to see how it played out. Back in the Astral Zero, a possessed Valsiria managed to hold down all the girls except Ellis and was absorbing their divine power. Kamito realized they were in trouble and decided to go in to help them, but Ast reminded him that he would only be able to use her as an elemental wafi. Meanwhile, Ellis was trying to fight off Elsiria, so Claire told her to save herself, but she refused and attacked her sister again. When she reached Valsiria, she couldn't use her power and realized she had started absorbing her divine powers too. Ellis resigned to her faith, and just as Valsiria was about to hit her, Kamito cut her arm off. He then released all the girls and told them he'd handle the rest, but Claire scolded him for coming to fight in his condition. He told them not to worry and said he had something to settle with Valsiria. He then attacked her with full strength, and as the girls watched, Ellis noticed that he moved the same way Ren did three years ago. However, he was already reaching his limit, and just then, the army had cut off the fortress grew into a lance. Claire screamed at him to move, but Fianna told her to let him be as she channeled her healing magic and shot it at Kamito, instantly healing his wound before she fainted. The girls then decided to lend him a hand, and together they attacked Valsiria from every angle, not giving her a chance to defend herself. With the help of Alice's wind power, Kamito charged at Valsiria and stabbed her. He told her he was going to save her, and as she looked at him, she realized he and Ren were the same person. Valsiria accepted her defeat, but Kamito told her it was a team effort that brought her down. Elsewhere, the elf was watching, and the moment Valsiria lost, she complained that her seal had been broken. However, she wasn't discouraged and decided she'd play with Kamito next if she got the chance. Just then, Greyworth approached her and referred to her as Vivian Melosa, her former student. She was surprised to see her, so Greyworth told her that the moment she saw the two students whose elemental spirits had rampaged days before, she realized their cursed seals matched the ones she'd used before. Vivian asked if she was going to hurt her because of some stupid students in Greyworth told her she'd do anything to protect her students before she released a spirit that attacked her. When the spirit was done, all that remained was Vivian's bloody clothes, but before she left, she noticed Restia watching her. Restia told her she wouldn't allow Kamito to do whatever she wanted him to before she disappeared. After the match, Kamito and the girls went to Ellis's room to celebrate the fact that they had been picked to represent their school in the blade dance, and while they were teasing each other, Ellis came in dressed in a pink gown. As Kamito watched her, he remembered Valsiria had asked him to watch over her sister while she was away receiving treatment. It turned out that she had lost most of her divine power because of the curse seal and needed time to recover. Back in the present, the girls tried to feed him some cake, even though they each tried to do it at the same time. Days later, while the team stood at the Astral Gate and were transported to the Astral Zero, Claire thought of how far she had come since she met Kamito and was glad to have met him. Who do you think the real villain is, Greyworth or Restia? Let us know if you want part 2 by commenting Rip Vivian in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.